Okay, I six here is an E. Hmm? Ah, example. Hello, everybody. Hello, Mustafa. Oh, Hello. can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Thanks for yeah. thanks for um. Sorry about the the delay to start uh, in the in the beginning. I just set this uh. Next, um, we have some of our amazing students here. Say hello. <laughs> and and we have a few of others online joining us. Um, thanks, everybody, for um, joining our next industry guest talk. Uh, Mustafa, I missed you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so, <Me too. laughs> So our next guest um, is Mustafa. He's a very dear uh, friend to me. Um, we actually started this industry together, I think 1999. Yeah, that was yeah. the year we started. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. And how long? It is 20, 24, 25 years now. Yeah. So it's a long, long time. So Mustafa was always smarter than me. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so I was envious. So um, you have been through like um, your your CV and your journey is very uh, makes everyone envious. You have worked in a wide variety of industries, including um, animation, visual effects, and game design. And in many positions, um, Mustafa has been pipeline developer. Um, so today. Uh, you will have an idea of what a pipeline developer, uh, you know, does and what does it mean to do to be a pipeline developer. And uh, so you you basically build the infrastructure that everyone else works around it, right? <laughs> and I and I got very fascinated when I heard that you started doing to do a lot of Unreal Engine based pipeline productions for. Um, I assume that uh, the projects that you are doing now is mainly like visual effects and game and, and animation oriented, right? Yeah, yeah, it's animation. Okay. So I, um, it's enough of me talking. I will hand it to you to start your talk for us and for our amazing students. And then after that, we will do some Q and A. Yeah. Thank you, Jose. Hello. My name is Mustafa Shambar Daniari. I'm, uh, I'm glad that uh, I'm with you. Great students of the Auckland University. Yep. Mm, I have uh, created a presentation for you today. At first, I wanted to introduce myself, and then I will move to the uh, details of how we can say someone is a TD. Technical director, pipeline TD, and this kind of stuff. Let me share my presentation. Yep. Can you see Beautiful. that? Yes, yes, we can see it. Good. Yep. Now I'm performance TD and animal logic uh, in Sydney. Yep. Uh, how it started? Uh, as I say, Hussein said, it is a long time ago. We started, we started a, a small animation company, like a startup in Iran. And I added to the team later as a technical artist. And uh, I actually was participated in the technical part of the things, like FX and tool development at that time. Mostly, I am using. Uh, I was using Maya as our main tool. Uh, uh, later, I focused mostly on the how things works in the animation pipeline and workflows and things like this. Uh, I uh, try to understand the production uh, in a as a big picture and how things work every department what every department do and yeah at that time i remember that i created a plugin that managed asset setting asset using in for our production using xml and 
or try to uh, manage our render farm, pretty small render farm at that time, it's maybe 20 to 25 nodes with tools and scripts. Uh, at that time, I, I started using Houdini as a procedural because I, I really like the procedural approach in making things. And uh, uh, also, I uh, try to understand how I can improve and extend the using of the tools inside Maya and Houdini by programming. So I started using learning C++, Python, later mail, and this is scripting tools. Yeah, you, um, uh, you studied, sorry for interrupting you, I sometimes like. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, you studied um, business management like me for bachelors, if I, yeah, <laughs> if yeah. I remember correctly. Did, did the yeah. knowledge of management help you? Because a lot of tools that you developed, I remember, like helped many people, like, and you had this like, overarching uh, mindset that like how connect people together, how help them to work together, how make their lives easier. Is that knowledge of management and project management uh, helped you on this on these like tools at all? Yeah, yeah, sure. Because uh, uh, one uh, uh, one of the, mm, you know, part of the production is planning and monitoring and we have this kind of things in animation too how we can plan how we can monitor people how we can uh, digitize things to get data from different uh, part of the production yeah yeah it's helped me but uh, i also was uh, interested in the technical things too that was related to uh how we can make things in in computer so yeah somehow it's help and it creates a person that like to know uh, the whole picture and also like to focus on details yeah i moved to the maybe seven years ago pretty quickly that i was started working on skyframe and an animation company medium sized in Iran. Uh, we decided to uh, use uh, Unreal Engine at that time. I remember that was version three, version ten, I think, or version eleven. That we were we decided to use that because uh, we thought that it will it will help us to uh, accelerate our production and uh, decreasing costs. So I helped them to. Uh, with some tools to transferring data from the animation data from Maya to animation to Unreal Engine and managing render queues there. And uh, uh, as I, I, I can say that it helped the company to produce animation uh, more than what I remember is that uh, 200 minutes, I think, in, in, in near one or two, one and a half year. And that's uh, a very, very, very successful project. And uh, from there, uh, and another another project also was in, in Skyframe that was a, a TV series from another country. Uh, they wanted to use, uh, 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 they have created that uh, maybe 13 uh, episodes of, of that uh, at the time, uh, but it was very costly for them and very uh, time consuming. So they decided to uh, use uh, other tools to accelerate their, their production. Uh, let's let, let, uh, uh, take a look at that at first and we can talk about that later. Yeah, yeah, let's play it. Oh, beautiful. How many episodes uh, you worked on? We we worked on that, uh, I think, for three to four episodes. 
after mm. that we moved to another project i don't know what uh, they continue that with, with them or not uh, it's a but, pretty show yeah, yeah it, 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 it yeah. was very heavy project with that was uh, you, you let it let it play ah oh, that was fun <laughs> we were having fun <laughs> we can't talk yeah. on it like while you're playing so yeah. uh, so you can you can uh, so so for this project, uh, the 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 assets you got was in V-Ray, and then you rewrote them to be rendered in Red. Yeah, yeah. Right? We we use some tools. I, I actually I create some tools to. Oh, you created transfer, tools. Oh, yeah, man. yeah. To create to transfer V-Ray to Redshift. Mm -hmm. We completely moved the production from V-Ray to Redshift because you know that Redshift is more. Yeah, much faster. Uh, faster yeah. than the. V-Ray because it used the hardware. And also we created some tools to uh, manage projects that was in tape tableau and optimizing that uh, automatization that. And then you uh, use the Redshift to render that in the Maya. So what do you mean and by that optimization with using Tableau? I've never tableau, heard of that. Yeah, yeah, Tableau is a, uh, let, let me stop that because I can't. <laughs> Oh, yeah. you can't yeah. we can't focus <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah we can we can yeah you that um can use a tool to manage time to uh, uh, actually it is it is a kanban uh, board to assign uh, tasks to, to the different people and move uh, the tasks to the to the table and uh, we can use that to manage time between different people uh, and uh, different person and the, and uh, the, and the yes. departments. Something so, like shot, shotgun, right? That not that shot, shotgun. It is very very simple. It is for programming, uh, not that, okay. not for. Uh, it's, it was free for some uh, some uh, limited person, but we use that uh, for our purpose. So uh, I, see. Uh, okay. I created some has some scripts to uh, get data from this and move that to the uh, 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 to the our optimization system mm. to say that the people that use that uh, open this shot today render this shot today like that shot today and yeah this kind of uh, dynamics that we had i created some script for that to uh, transfer data between these tools yeah, and moving to, uh, sorry, moving to uh, other project. It is, a, it is again in a sky frame. It was a it was feature a animation. Yeah, 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 that we made that at that time with a limited uh, team. At that time, we didn't, we didn't have that much big uh, group of people. We did that with a limited team. And uh, I was a supervisor, technical supervisor at this. I redesigned. I remember you, you were the main T, uh, T technical supervisor for this project, right? Yeah, sure. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. correct. Uh, and did you have yeah. like other uh, TDs uh, working for you, or you were the only TD no, on the project? No, we, we were a group of four people. Four people, was, uh, yeah, and, and you was. were the lead. Yeah, you were the lead. And yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. I sh I saw a few shots of this uh, this project, which was very interesting, especially the hair. Like now, I see that you mentioned that, uh, and in your slides that you uh, you developed some tools for the hair simulation, right? Yeah. Uh, actually, for the first time, we used the uh, XGen oh, okay. uh, here in project and. I made some scripts to yeah, to uh, to create to transfer exchange from a uh, different object to uh, and to uh, simulate them and make cash from them and then oh. transfer that cash to the hair uh, from uh, hair system to the exchange and this uh, pipeline uh, we created a, ta uh, a script to make that uh available for the artists to do that very easily and mm. yeah and so other people did the uh, effects 
and that was a good project that I think uh, that was somehow successful. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I didn't see that in the in the in full. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah but, uh, okay. But yeah, from there I moved to another company in Bangkok, Thailand. M2. That's they like to improve their their using of the Unreal Engine for their animation production. I help them to develop some tools to transfer sets between Maya and you uh, Unreal Engine. That's because they wanted to have uh, the available the ability to. Uh, I mean uh, the the design that they created in the Unreal Engine back to Maya and have animation there, and then uh, again move that to Unreal Engine to render and. We created some uh, tool set for them. Uh, I was actually the uh, the pipeline uh, uh, master of the uh, Unreal Engine in that in that company that managed the repo, the Git repo, and other things. Uh, we created the rich Unreal to, tool set to import animation, import uh, set design, import. Um, cameras and also uh, skeletal meshes with uh, uh, without animation. It later be add some tools to make crowds and um, to rent to manage the rendering. Let let's let's take like at yeah, this let, one too. Let's play it. Yeah, I, I love Marham. <laughs> I don't know about others. Oh. By the way, uh, uh, we can't hear any sound because you didn't share the sound once you just screen sharing. So we only see the the images, oh, which is fine. That. Yeah, yeah. You can you can mute the sound. Yeah. Yeah. So like so because we don't hear the sound anyway. Um, because uh, if you want to uh, share the sound, you have to stop yeah, sharing yeah, and yeah, stop sharing and reshare again. Um, yeah. Screen let, share. Let, stop. Let me do that. Yeah. Uh, stop screen sharing and yeah. once once you screen share again, uh, make sure you turn on the desktop sound. Desktop sound. Uh, we have many people uh, joined us online. Uh, guys, please uh, at any point, like in the middle or at the end while uh, Mustafa is talking, feel free to uh, leave questions. Uh, if you have any, I will read it for Mustafa and then um, and then we go through all the questions. So you guys as well, like as we go through. OK, play it for us. Can you hear now? Yes, yes, sound. I never wanted this. I never wanted to unleash my legions. Together we banished the ignorance of old night. Stole power from the gods and lied to your sons. Mankind has only one chance to prosper. If you will not seize it, then I will. Wow. So let it be war. of terror to the galactic rim.
Mind blowing. <laughs> so much stuff happening here. I I bet the being like pipeline titty on this project would have been yeah. a lot of headache. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Usually, uh, actually, the, after I arrived, I did something that's this details of the thing is possible. Uh, be, be happy, be possible. Sorry, and uh -huh. yeah. Because so what did you do that made that high level of detail possible? Uh, for example, check that that we have a uh, scene with uh, a lot of object on that. They they created that, and they like to have have that in their Maya scene. They they mm -hmm. create that set design in in Unreal. It is easy in Unreal to scatter things to add very uh, details very very quickly. They wanted to have that in Maya. Uh, like a foliage. Yeah, like they want a like a foliage tool in Maya. In Maya to have ah. that, that that ground to put animation on that. It is possible after I uh, I joined them with the tools, and yeah, and the next uh, there was there was another animation too that uh, I uh, actually I moved to Sydney and I didn't see that. But there was another one that also was very good. Uh, so I think they still use that sets, that tools in their production. And it was also the work of um, other people that was very professional uh, in, that com in that company, especially the one that uh, to make the effects and the uh, professional in uh, UI, uh, Unreal Engine teams. That was good. Yeah, I was happy to be part of that. Yeah, I and wish I would have been. Yeah, but that, that's that's so much stuff. Yeah, awesome. now I am in Animal Logic, now part of Netflix to make feature animation. Animal Logic is a well known company. So, Animal Logic, for, for the ones who don't know, Animal Logic has been uh, sold, like, is part of like uh, Netflix. So the entire uh, company, which is a visual effects and animation company, is being, uh, um, uh, you know, like purchased by uh, Netflix. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now it's uh, focused mostly on the animation making, not VFX anymore. Oh, not and VFX then, anymore. Okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting. And yeah, they have uh, some. Uh, interesting animation projects. Uh, there we have a comprehensive pipeline. That means the pipeline with a lot of details that we that uh, allow us to make great animation with a lot of professional people, a big team. Uh, we use mostly Pixar USD. Animology was always a uh, contributor to the Pixar UST okay. technology from the start. UST is a universal scene description, is a technology that allows people to and companies to use a single file type for every uh, operation. That means from modeling to rig to animation to cache to image, and everything is a UST file, even the audios uh, and because of that, it helped us to uh, uh, open and import and export everything very easily. Uh, yeah, USD fantastic. Uh, it's it's two years that we want to incorporate USD into the teaching. So it's just too much work. Yeah, so too much work in a in a university level. So. Um, and also tools like two years ago when we started, two, three years ago, tools were very uh, crude and cumbersome, but now uh, tools are getting much better yeah. in terms because of USD management, yeah. Because companies started to use that and yeah. they, okay. also we have a open source uh, repo that we have a lot of good tools there for USD and other things. And also Animal Logic, has a, a lab, a lab USD that you can use. That's a full scene with a lot of details inside that, that is openly available to use. 
And also we have a very great research and development team here. Lots of professional people. Yeah. And yeah, we have uh, custom tools for ourselves to do things. So it is a very, uh, I can say it is a very, uh, one of the best things in the world that we can make what we want, everything we want in an animation. And yeah, one of them is uh, the, the last, the, the first one I actually I worked on that was a magician elephant from the Netflix. And another one is the Leo that you can see the main character of that and some other projects. <laughs> Thank you. That that's, was uh, uh, the last thing is that uh, it's my personal interest is the generative art that I do me in my spare time. I like to visualize uh, mathematical functions using 3D tools, mostly Houdini. <laughs> I try to find things from the internet, different papers, yeah. and implement them with. Uh, I I encourage everyone to uh, connect with Mustafa on LinkedIn. He he keeps posting these mathematical equations turned into master masterpieces like beautiful pieces of art <laughs> no. uh, like uh, and 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 he talks about it in in detail which is like fascinating uh, tell us like what what do you do down in animal logic what's 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 uh, the daily life of a pipeline td what is pipeline td like after having your coffee in the morning what what else yeah. do you do <laughs> yeah so like every company, we have a list of uh, tasks we should, that we should do. Mm. And uh, tasks actually, uh, uh, we decide about how and uh, who to do these tasks with a meeting. And after that, we can uh, focus on that task, follow that and if there is, uh, we need anything, we can ask from different uh, people because no one knows anything uh, here. <laughs> and everyone knows part of the story. So, yeah, I, 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 I let, let me continue with this. Uh, yes, yes, what, yes. What go ahead. Yes, sorry. For you, for the animation. Uh, I'm talking to pipeline. Ignore yeah. me. <laughs> no, no, thank you. Uh, Hussein, that you sometimes help me to uh, manage the time. Uh, so, what uh, animation production environment? What is the animation for a production environment? Uh, we have different departments in uh, in the animation uh, company, uh, like uh, modeling. You may know about them: modeling, uh, animation, effects, or lighting and IT different uh, groups and every one of them have used different softwares like Maya, 3D Studio Max, Blender, Unreal Engine and every one of these uh, software also use different workflows uh, that uh, is uh, special to them. So we have a bunch of uh, Different department with different workflows that make it hard to know every everything. Uh, uh, it is a and 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 uh, mostly you are uh, faced with the complicated processes. You uh, a black box, I mean, that uh, do the things for you with some parameters. I think that you may know not may, may know uh, what happened. May know not. Uh, to understand what happened inside that. Uh, then you have a lot of feedbacks, I mean, uh, and reviews. You may you make uh, image and data for different groups of people, directors, clients, and you should um, uh, make their approval for them. So, they check that and make feedbacks for for them, and uh, it happened due to, due to review loops. I mean, you make reviews with image and videos. 
and sometimes this feedback uh, escalated to deeper level. I mean, for example, if there is a problem in the rig, uh, it may be related to model. So we have uh, uh, data producers. That means uh, everyone in the in the in the company actually making data. Even uh, modelers, model is a kind of uh, is, a, is a is a list of vertexes. So it's the data, and uh, an image also is a uh, bit is a uh, bitmap of data. So everyone make data, and this data should be used by someone else. Consumers, we have also consumers of that data. Uh, we have automation that uh, things happen in the background that we don't know. We have a scale, uh, scalability. That means we should prepare things that will be available if we get grow to the bigger level. We should make abstraction for this scalability. We have adopt new technologies and we have IT infrastructure. This is the uh, ecosystem of uh, a, a, a company that we know that uh, it is very complicated. We have different things, a lot of uh, technical stuff. Uh, different kind of files, file type, data, different reviews. So what happened if there wasn't a system to manage all of them? If there wasn't uh, uh, things that uh, uh, people can refer to that to understand what data is this, who, uh, who should access to this one, who should know about this? This is what uh, we say pipeline. Mm. The things that manage all of these things in a in a in a in a system, to, and let them let the people access to the things they like in a correct place. Uh, I prepared something for you that I think you know about that. This is a pi pipeline design of uh, a design a friendly design of the illumination company pipeline that you can see. I didn't see that okay. one. That's so cute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, it is shows things with pipe. That shows it is like a pipeline. Yeah, and it's a pipe. It's a literal pipeline. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, um, yeah, it's very interesting the the stuff that you mentioned because in in many productions, like what we see, that the heroes of the production are like modeling artists and simulation artists and like kind of visual effects or compositors. But like few of us know that like the, the 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 thing that glues all of this together and like connects all of this together is a is a pipeline TD, exactly. someone who like oversees all the production. Exactly, yeah. And uh, what I wanted to sh to show you what bit this is that every part of the company, every department connected with the somehow a pipe that uh, that we say to how the like to hold the structure the pipeline. And uh, to define that officially, pipeline is a system consisting of people, hardware, and software aligned to work in a, a specific sequential or parallel order to do predetermined tasks in a predetermined time frame, which will lead to a 3D animation product or assets as a final output. So it is a uh, set of uh, people, hardware, and software. Mm. We say this uh, pipeline. So who is the pipeline TD? Someone who technically support the animation pipeline and improve it in a new feature, with a new feature. So pipeline TD, someone that support the pipeline operation. He, uh, he makes sure that everything is working as it, should, as it should be and everything is in place, the data, move correctly between departments and it is sane and safe and without problem. We have uh, different department TDs. If you wanted to say horizontally, that means uh, for every department we have TDs. Asset TDs, animation TDs, light TDs, effects TDs, compositing, edit, and much more like crowd TDs mm. and <laughs> CFX TDs and uh, yeah, for example, asset TDs. Asset artists make the model. Asset TDs create some tools for him or, or her. Animation artists make animation. Animation TDs create tools 
uh, solve its, uh, the problem and uh, make sure that the animation move from uh, this uh, step to the next, that is, for example, lighting or effects. Uh, every one of this uh, department has its uh, TDs. So, uh, uh, another level is the vertical that we have supervisor lead senior and junior TDs for every one of these. Supervisor is actually the one who make decisions about uh, big things. Lead actually may manage people. Seniors actually do the, the, the job mostly the development and juniors mostly the support. Uh, let, let's uh, talk about uh, support and development a little. Support is uh, problem solving. For example, when a scene cannot be open, we should take a look at uh, found the reason of that. Development is improving the features, uh, developing a new feature, I mean. For example, we need a tool to do this then the, the developer do that. So we have some people for support, some people for develop, and sometimes people should do the, this two of them together. Uh, something that I do in the animal Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Then, so what uh, capabilities that TD, TD should have? The knowledge, the knowledge of the TD animation pipeline, uh, he or she know, should know the how animation pipeline works from modeling to the lighting and compositing, everything in between. Uh, he or she should know about that. Um, uh, you know that uh, we have some modeling, then uh, rig, rigging team and uh, material and shading team add details to that models and characters created and we have set modeling assemblies and then move to the layout and animation and cameras and then to the fx cfx and different things we uh, it, it, is, it is good for a tds to know the things that happen inside the creating the animation After the graphics then is the next next thing a little knowing about that is good how uh, things working uh, in the computer. If you want to create a model or we uh, we create an FX. This is not a uh, uh, shoot for for him, but for her. But uh, it is good if he knows about that. It help him or her to do his job. Another thing is mathematics and physics. It's not again. It is not very. Uh, and later for him or her, but it is helping him. Uh, as sometimes we need uh, vector cal uh, cal calculation and matrices and physics, uh, very simple physics formulas. It's uh, help TDs to, to do their job if uh, they know about these things. Different 3D softwares, uh, like uh, Maya, uh, Houdini, all of them uh, actually uh, help him or her to know about how they can use the best tool for their work. Um, Tiris actually knows about the main tool that uh, they they use in the pipeline. Mostly it is Maya these days, maybe in the future it's changed. Uh, but also we use Houdini and um, sometimes we use Blender and uh, yeah, it is, it's better to know about these things, it's help him. And scripting and programming is a, one of the tools that uh, TD should know. It's help uh, TD to develop things because it is not uh, the, the, the request from the production never finished and they'd like to do to, to new things and to improve things and it is done by scripting and programming. Another thing is communication, because uh, TDs are between the artists and CG supervisors. Uh, what I mean is that um, uh, artists uh, have a request 
and he should say that to the TDs. TDs should communicate with artists to know to know what actually artists want and apply uh, implement that. And another way talk to city supervisors to uh, uh, to translate their request to uh, uh, supervisors in a, in a, in a in a in a technical way. So the communication skills is good for, for a TD. Time management is uh, is a very good uh, quality uh, qualification for him too because he try to manage time um, every every uh, uh, every task actually needs some time to do uh, for it and he or she too must uh, manage his time or her time to do the things at the uh, at the accepted uh, time assigned to that task. So it is a very uh, it is very needed for TD. And another uh, and the last one is the teaching skill. TD is actually made documents for the tool. I can't do that. Uh, <laughs> documentation <laughs> is a very, very it, it is it is uh, uh, it is uh, forgotten things in the companies actually, but yeah. it is very important. Because it's helped to uh, transfer knowledge to the uh, to the others to the and yeah and they can uh, uh, stop making wheels from the start and they can improve mm -hmm. things very quickly. So what is the TT task workflow? New task arrive. It is a feature or a patch. Feature is a new thing. Patch is a debugging. Mm -hmm. The task is clear. Uh, or it is not clear. It, if the task is not clear, more, more info is needed, and uh, the info uh, prepared by the task owner, or it is uh, enough, so he start developing or debugging and do the testing. Then if it, if it is okay, it uh, say the task owner to test the codes, and if it is okay, it will be added to the production pipeline. This is a beautiful chart, by, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> it is very simple, but yeah, but it's very, very, very uh, expressive. <laughs> it tells a lot. Yeah. Uh, I here I uh, I have an an example about how we can do that that chart in the real uh, situations. I had a task that uh, the layout team say that transfer environment uh, set from Maya to Unreal. This is a task that I saw that. I uh, There is uh, some document inside the task that say animation layout in Maya happen inside Maya and uh, environment design is in uh, Unreal Engine. Uh, we wanted to transfer animation uh, sorry, the set environment from uh, Unreal Engine, for example, from Maya to Unreal Engine to add the environment detail to that uh, set that is rough inside Maya. So uh, may I ask from the task owner what type of environment set we need to move? And he say that we only need, for example, ground or we need the uh, constructions or we need to move the everything. Uh, so he add to this uh, task the details of what type of environment we need to move. Uh, so I start more working on that, that, that on that task. We, I create a list of task uh, objects in Maya by I mean by programming. Get their transformation, create a cache file. Cache, I mean, for example, a JSON file or, or uh, uh, um, uh, another type of files, OBJ file, for example, or UST. Uh, then in US uh, Unreal Engine, I open read that cache and transform the related object based on that cache. I test this uh, tool in uh, uh, Unreal Engine, and if it's worked correctly, uh, I merged the update to the master branch that everyone can use that later. 
Beautiful. How long one, one cycle would take? Like, let's say this one, how long in your experience? did It, it, it is it is depends on the, the nature of the task. For example, this one may be one week, but oh, okay. sometimes some of them may be yeah. uh, one long. day or or I had a task that takes more than two months to be done. Yeah, <laughs> okay. different. I like that task. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, how to be a good TD? Uh, try to master uh, the technical skills. What I said in the uh, capabilities of TDs. Try to learn programming. Try to learn something uh, uh, a little from the mathematics and physics and computer and software. Everything you like and it's help you uh, try to understand the animation production pipeline as i said before uh, be a strong problem solver try to understand the problem attack it in the correct uh, angle actually and solve that in the correct time stay open to learn new things so mm. try to uh, uh try to be uh, adaptive to new technologies and uh, search for different uh, new way to of doing things and do not stop from learning uh, be creative uh, i mean do the things in a better way that uh, it's needs for this needs to be a uh, little uh, informative about things to to know things better to uh, actually to master this technical skill that i said in the first item uh improve your communication capabilities that is essential for everyone in the production in the animation industry and make a work life balance to which is very important important that do not burn out during after your work, and that's it. <laughs> it's very oh, fantastic. Quick. <laughs> fantastic. Um, the people who are online, uh, feel free to leave your questions. Um, anyone here who you might have? Uh, so, for someone heading into the animation industry, what software, in addition to Maya, is recommended to like have knowledge of? Uh, actually, it is uh, related to what uh, branch of animation production do you want to continue? For example, if you want to move to animation, I think, I mean, it's good to know about Maya and uh, recently, uh, so we have good updates in Blender. But if you wanted to move to uh, FX, CFX, or procedural assets, it is better to learn Houdini because it is the best uh, application now to do things in the FX. Or so for composites, it is better to know new. So it is related to what uh, field you wanted to continue your yeah. endeavor. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. Any other questions? I have few questions here on my side. Um, so. You have oh, no, no, no. anyone? OK. Uh, online people, please uh, either open your mic or just leave uh, a note on uh, the on, on there. And I will let um, oh, you have. Anya has a question. Hang on. Sorry. Hello. Um, I just have a pretty general question. But what do you think was the hardest thing you faced starting out in the industry for the first time? <laughs> for the first time, uh, from uh, you mean from the technical point of view or everything? Both. I think both. Both. From the uh, technical part, I think that understanding the the how things happen inside the, an application was very challenging for me <laughs> because I created a, a sphere in the in the in the for example Maya. At that time, I thought to myself, how it's created at that in the middle of the scene, how it's there, is it, uh, what is it actually? <laughs> so, so later I, I 
uh, found out that this is uh, the, the, a bunch of data in the RAM, in the memory of the computer, that the 3D presentation of the Maya used that to show that inside the Maya. <laughs> and yeah, in the in the in the industry now there are a lot of things that happening, and I th I, I I persuade you to follow them. One of them is actually uh, all of you may know about AI things happening these days and. Yeah, it is hard to understand that, but it is good. I think the future will be uh, related to these things. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I have two questions, Mustafa. One is you mentioned Blender multiple times. Um, I, as a teacher, which doesn't teach Blender, but see students like, a lot of students are very fascinated about it. I don't know why, because possibly uh, because it's a free uh, app. Yes, yes, that's a very good reason. It's free. And also like it's been taught at high school. So many uh, students bring that knowledge to the uni. Um, and it's the tool is getting like better and better um, as it goes. I'm as someone who oversees the entire production, you know, as a, as a mm. pipeline TD, how do you see the positioning, the position of a of a this like uh, open source, uh, not so industry graded tool finding its way in your like pipeline? Yeah, uh, what I should say is that the big companies actually really interested in open source things because it's uh, it's. Uh, very efficient for them to use that. It is free and it is available to be customized by the people. So uh, Blender is one of them. Blender uh, now is a very good application that uh, actually you can you can use that to make animation from start to finish. Uh, nowadays we do not that um, use that that much. But uh, but I think uh, because it is free, as your as the person said, um, because it's free, it is uh, uh, people may use that in their production, especially startups that try to uh, minimize their cost of production. For for big companies, it is it is open, and it is for that they use that because the code is available for them, yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, anyone, last question anyone might have? I have a question regarding AI. Uh, how, oh, I have a, uh, Michael Thanks. says have, has a question. Uh, shoot it out, Michael. Hey. Um, I'll put it in the chat, but it's, if you can hear me. Yep. Yes, yes, we can I, hear you. Yeah, it's more just um, with a TD, what's the sort of your, what what do you spend more of your time on as far as other solving other technical issues for team members or are you working on your own part of the production um are you more well, like the oh sorry no 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 it's gone yeah so you're more supporting the other members as far as fixing issues they can't solve or is it more you've got your own workflow as well uh, yeah, uh, uh, as I said before, the support and uh, develop are two different parts of the TD job. So uh, it is depends on the stage of the project mostly. If it is a, we are on the end of the project, the tasks are more supports because we should uh, we should uh, solve the problem very quickly to make that available the files to the next uh, department. But at the start of the project, it is most developing because we create tools to uh, help production. And so uh, it is actually depends on the stage of the project and also the, the capabilities of the people. Some people are good at support, some are good at developing. And actually the supervisor decide about that who do uh, any one of these tests? And yeah. Cool, thank you. 
Thank you. And uh, my last question is, um, as you mentioned, AI is um, is becoming uh, very topical. Um, like, I'm I'm wondering, like, uh, have have you in the pipeline production uh, as a pipeline TD, have you started incorporating some uh, AI or machine learning into the uh, pipeline, or it's still very young? Uh, actually, it is for the big companies. It's a starting stage for them to use AI. Uh, most of them use uh, in, use that in rendering and lighting before uh, because yeah. tools uh, renders actually use that machine learning to see the uh, methods to denoising things and yeah, improve the, is, yeah. yeah and or or rescaling the images but the ai is optimization so i think in the new future every part of the part of the pipeline will be affected by the ai to improve the production and to improve the uh, efficiency and effectiveness and this kind of things it is it is not clear now but as you may know companies have started to acquire uh, to hire people with uh, ai and machine learning uh, skills yeah now uh, uh, there was a, there was a new news about uh, Netflix that hire people with uh, machine learning uh, knowledge. So I think it is important. It is what it's what we are in the starting stage of that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Mustafa. It was a very Thank insightful you. talk, uh, uh, casting light on some parts of the production. Uh, we we uh, we don't have a chance to look at. I submitted a. Um, an article to SIGGRAPH Asia in Sydney. That's good. So, yep. so if I if I get in, I will come and, and see you. Uh, sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in summer. Yeah, I will enjoy okay. it too, yeah. Thank I you so much. I have a question much. from you. Also. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, can you say uh, what's actually the, the the animation department of Auckland actually do? Is it a traditional way of animation or is it? Uh, yeah, so we have three, so our, um, our department yeah, is yeah, called yeah. AVG Animation, Visual Effects, and Game Game Design. So we have three pathway: animation pathway, game design pathway, and visual effects pathway. So, which I, I'm the visual effects guy, and um, some of these students are visual effects, some of them are uh, game, and some are the animation. Uh, so the visual effects uh, is highly technical. Um, Game is somewhere in between, so a lot of creativity and technicality intertwined. Uh, animation pathway, uh, there's a lot of room for uh, experimenting two-dimensional and 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 mm -hmm. a lot of uh, uh, traditional way of uh, anim you know animation making or like media making or image making. Also, we have a new we have uh, a couple of minors which our students take one is very which is very popular is called mocap motion capture oh, yeah. we have a very massive motion capture studio which is one of um like um, our main tools so and many of our students who study motion capture alongside their major they start working for weta in as motion trackers we have uh, another minor called an uh, animated drawing which just started it's a lot of it's 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 fully traditional drawing and 2d animation and then there is cinematic arts which is basically a lot of filmmaking and uh, extended reality which is a minor uh, with focus on virtual reality and hopefully soon as we are negotiating now to uh, buy a huge uh, LED walls like or virtual uh, production uh, studio. So then we will have a virtual production uh, component. That's where we will we need a lot of Unreal Engine practices. Yes. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Very uh, interesting about how you are working on that uh, uh, actually in university. And yeah, hope you are 
you know, for for you the best to say. Thank you. Thank you so much. I will chat with you again more. And, yeah, sure. Uh, take care and have a good rest of the day. You too. You too. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you.